So today I'm going to be showing a mini breakdown of this render right here which ended up looking more like this after post and I'm going to dive right into it. So here's here's a file which you can get on on Gumroad or by becoming our Patreon, I'll talk about that later. So the main element here, of course, is a Pokeball. Um, I made this myself. I didn't totally um, build it in the sense that I didn't build the inside. The inside is just a, a sphere. I'm going to shut off the instances real quick. So we got a, a bottom, a top, the middle, which, which is just a sphere, and the rings. Um, and to this, to the bottom part, what I did was I went to edge mode and I just uh, clicked on the K button for the knife and and I did some, I just made some cuts. So I'm going to solo this. I just made some cuts. I think I used the loop, but I'm just going to use it like this. So I made some cuts and I grabbed the middle part and actually I'm gonna check only select visible elements and I grab the middle part of everything I'm gonna ungrab all these and I just pushed it back and that and that created the sense that there was a crack so that's what I did for that um, I could have also used the bool um, probably would have been well not necessarily cleaner but it would have worked too but this is what worked for me um, so I have some instances here which are two more pokeballs and then some plants so these plants these plants, oh, these plants here, and then, and then these plants I downloaded from somewhere. But if you get the, if you get the the file from from Gumroad or in my Patreon page, then you will have these. I'm not sure. Oh, I think I bought I bought a whole pack of plants. But anyway. These are these are um, these were already made. You can also go to websites like Turbo Squid or you um, just Google free uh, free three D models. Or if you can model this yourself, then go ahead. And then I have some rocks. I have some rocks here, which are just um, they're just landscapes. So they're just landscapes, and then I click on spherical and then it turns it into the sphere and just shrink this a lot and then you you know you can you can edit this however you want and you can still edit the landscape and I just applied the 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 plain texture so the plane here is just a couple of planes duplicated and I have a material here I'm using octane render for this and in my in my in my uh, material I have a displacement and this is just a, a texture um, this one I think um, was done in world machine I think I'm not sure because I have a bunch of these but I think this is from one of people's um, VJ clips if I'm not mistaken, I've I've done a couple in World Machine. You can also learn World Machine, uh, but that's that. So if we render and we start the live viewer real quick. There it is. Um, my camera has a an f stop of two point seven, so it's not super shallow, but. Um, you'll get some nice blurriness. Uh, these platonics here, I just added them for 
a little bit better composition. I don't know. I just kind of like them there with the metal texture, which, which is just a, a glossy material with a really high index and a little bit of roughness. So it's not totally like a mirror. It's more, you know, it's, it's more rough. Um, what else? So for the, for the, for the top and bottom of my Pokeball, I have a couple of materials with um, with like dust and scratches, a couple of textures to to create those those kind of those scratches there. It's probably better if we see the uh, my close it. Um, just to create these these uh, scratches and I believe here it's in the roughness. And also the diffuse, and that's it. I think I had in the bump too, and they look good, but um, I, I don't know. I just preferred it like this. So let's see where's my Pokeball. So what uh, what's applied here is actually a mixed texture where where there's a uh, my my octane glossy, which is just the uh, uh, just the white. A white texture. I don't think there's anything on this. Yeah, it's just a white, oh, oh, a white texture. And then I have a dirt texture here, which um, it's just a diffuse. So in my diffuse channel, I have this uh, this kind of sand uh, specular here. I'm using it as a diffuse, and have some roughness. Um, I'm sorry, um, I have a, a specular a channel, I have a texture in the specular channel, which is part of the same, or it kind of looks the same like asphalt. So my goal was not to make it look like, you know, like ground, but to have it, to make it have those, those kind of, those properties of, of roughness and bumpiness. Um, yeah, so there's a normal channel here too, with the asphalt. And that's it. So this texture is pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty bumpy. But that's not what you see entirely because I have it in the mixed material. So in my mix, in my amount, I have another texture which. Um, oh, well, I can't really see it. But I have another texture which has like little scratches and. Um, so it's mostly white, and wherever this is uh, lightest, so into these little, these little white streaks of of scratches, that's where the dirt shows, and that's for the bottom. So you don't really see that bumpiness of of the dirt that much, but but you get those scratches there. And for the top. I have um, the main gray material. Where is it? Where are you? All right. So I have I have my material here, the the gray one, which is a mix. So I have the dirt again. I have this dirt material, and then I have um, the main color, which is here. So here is just mostly gray with um, a couple of differences in the specular channel. So it's not, so it's not totally, you know, totally glossy. So there's some variation, and have a, a little bit of a uh, bump, which shows here in the edges. And that's it. So I have that was a mix of the dirt. Where are you? That was a mix of the dirt and the main color, and again, I put a, a material here with with some scratches and stuff, so it bleeds through. And then I put this in another mix material, so that I could put the R. So I have the the, the color of the R, which is just a red with you know some specular differences and all that. And so I put that 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 a red color and then the main gray, and then for the amount. I made the 
the R for Team Rocket. So only where it's white, the the material one color will show. So that's what that's what's reflecting here. Um, the black is just black, and this middle piece right here is just an emission, a black body emission. And so, in the in the texture, I just put a red. And in the distribution, I put a random noise. Um, I could totally go get away with not putting anything there, but yeah, I could probably just leave it like that. It won't really make a huge difference. So that's pretty much it as far as the Pokeball. I just wanted to, to go through this really quick uh, um, since I, I didn't really think of 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 recording my process doing this and also I didn't do it in just one day I kind of worked on it one day for a little bit and then I I let it, you know let it be there for a couple of days and I picked it up again another day so it, it wasn't it wouldn't have been a good <laughs> a good tutorial video but I'm thinking of of doing something else um but I hope this uh, at least this um if you if you're new to Octane at least you can you know see how how things work here in Octane. It's very I think I, in my opinion it's very simple. It's simpler than a uh, V-Ray, uh, much simpler than the advanced render. Um, you just gotta get you just gotta know what's what and what goes where. For example, wherever you put an image image texture and anywhere, if you were in in, in V-Ray or advanced render, you would just you just you would just load it. In Octane, you have to go to Octane and then put an image texture, which is here, and then from there you load your texture. But Octane has some neat, some really neat, um, a really neat projection, um, a texture projection, which I'm gonna show here. So I have this R, and when I first plugged it in, it wasn't right there where I, where I wanted it to be. So Octane has this UV transform and this projection. Um, so I don't think I used this, but in the UV transform, I I was able to to scale it down a little bit and then move it. So let me let me put this to render so you can see. And you can see there's two R's and the other R's in the back, and I didn't really, I didn't really care about it um, because I couldn't see it. So if I move this, you'll see the R here traveling across the ball. So after this, I let this render. Let's see, I let this render, and I brought it into Photoshop, and you can see there's a clear difference. This is a render from from Cinema. And this is the final render. So I'll show what I did. But pretty much, you can see I got rid of, the, I got rid of these hot pixels. And I did a, bla a bad cloning job here, but nobody will notice. Um, I added some extra scratches here with some Photoshop brushes. And I added some dirt here. And that's pretty much it. So here I added some some dirt. I believe what's this? All right, so this is just some some fog, just to blend it in with the background better. Uh, all right, this is the R was a little dark, so I brightened it up, and and I put some scratches here in the mask, and then there's an overall color correction. I felt like it was too dull. And I wanted it a little bit more overblown here, just just so it mimics a camera better. And I added some clouds. And that's pretty much it. Hope you learned something from this quick, 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 quick uh, breakdown. And peace out.